So we've got folks uh, online, Dennis, from uh, really around the world. Uh, that invitation you saw was sent uh, to your friends from all over, and uh, I saw Ken sent you back a note saying that it was too late for him uh, in Asia. But uh, we're going early this morning in hopes of using a conference that uh, is one that you uh, have enjoyed for many years. And obviously, we're not quite uh, able to do all of our things as normal with COVID. But uh, in some ways, I think that gave us an opportunity to reach out uh, in a bigger way than we might have otherwise. So uh, I'm excited to do that. Uh, Dr. America is going to start us off with uh, an introduction of you and your life and uh, as it pertains to uh, your career here with us. Scott? Thank you. Dennis, uh, this is 40 years of friendship and partnership that uh, I'm going to briefly go over. Uh, this is your last day of practice. I actually looked at the schedule. Here you are. You're taking Toronto off. I guess some, you must have more vacation days than I have. <laughs> uh, 44 years of Pete's Orson, 36, last 36 here. How did a farm boy get from Ohio get to California? Well, he was a, he was a, had a big family, 11 sips. And he went to Dalton High School. Here's one of his FFA pictures. Uh, the bottom there. I, I'm standing right behind you, as you can see. Um, he went to the high school there and then to Ohio University for his undergrad and med school in Cincinnati and his internship. We had internships in those days at Denver and then on to his orthopedic residency in Iowa with all the famous uh, people that were educators at that center. Uh, from there, he did his fellowship in Toronto Sick Kids. Uh, and these were his uh, bosses of Obechko, Salter, and Rang. Uh, meanwhile, in San Diego, uh, this was a sleepy little town, and we had a children's hospital that opened in 1954. There you can see the water tank across the street, the Highway 163, the corridor that connects us to Sharp. Um, it was a polio era, had a polio hospital, all one level. This building is still there if you go on across the street. There was our first CEO, uh, Johnson, who uh, ruled for 26 years. We had two ORs and one X-ray department. The X and no X-ray department. The X-ray was at Sharp, so we had to call over to get a portable X-ray in the OR if we were pinning a hip. No fluoro at that time. I used these rooms. There's Dave Collins, a bead surgeon who I later became in practice with in 1965. So there's our ORs. There's the X-ray over at Sharp. Actually, Dr. Wayne was not the first. Ponsetti trained person to come here. Chester Barda in 1946 uh, from Ohio came here, was the chief of Pete's ortho here at Rady Children's, Children's at that time, for 16 years. Um, I started in, in my residency in 1972, which was about the same time Dr. Sullivan came down from San Francisco and joined UCSD and became a full time professor here at Rady, or at Children's. He was a great teacher, clinician, researcher. Um, he inspired me to get into pediatric orthopedics and sent me off to Toronto to do my fellowship with Dr. Sulter, which was one year later than Dr. Wager, who I met when I was doing the interviews. And that's how we bonded up, uh, because he was there just finishing up. And here was his crew, 75, 76, Vern Tolo uh, was one of his partners, Dave Stolberg, famous uh, Harris hip score type uh, doc. Um, his, his mentor, of course, was Dr. Ponsetti, and his good friend was Stu Weinstein, who actually spent some time with me when I was in Toronto, so I got to know uh, him very well. Uh, Dennis then went on to Denver Children's for one year before heading off to Dallas with Tony Herring, who uh, was the lead there, and Dennis was number two. Uh, Tony actually spent a couple years here in, at the Navy Hospital, and I was rotating through there, so I got to know Tony, so we're all kind of linked together. I came back to San Diego and worked with Dr. Sullivan for five years, and um, Blair Sadler was now the new CEO, and he would reign for 26 years. I, in 1982, started a private practice at Pete's Ortho, and about the same time they built the, the Han surgical wing, which changes from two ORs to eight. We got a cafeteria, this is in the same place that it is now, and a radiology department for the first time ever. Um, Jerry Ford came to visit us when we opened that on. So we still didn't have a, we had a trauma program that started in 1984, but we had to see the patients over at Sharp. So we had to make this long quarter run to go see our, 
our trauma patients. And about that time, superpowers changed. We were seeing 14 a year uh, operative ones in 1984, and within 10 years, it was over 100. Of course, we see 14 in a week or so. Now, so I needed some help. I was really, really busy. I was in private practice. I was getting bombed with both difficult cases, lots of trauma, too busy to take care of a fellow. I needed an academic surgeon, and, uh, and I had to recruit somebody. Dennis, a year before, had mentioned if I ever had an opening leg. No, so it was a heavy recruitment. Do you want to come? He said yes. And so that's how we came to be partners in, in, uh, in 1984. Um, he was already at that time quite well known with lots of papers on disc disease, the hips, biomechanics, spinae, a spectacular video on uh, Lukey rods and how good they are compared to Harrington's, mapped the growth plate surgery, tibia vera, many papers. He had been eight years of practice, over 30 papers. He was the book review editor for uh, the Journal of Pediatric Orthopedics, which he still is until today. He was very active in post up meetings, very, very active, and so he was well known. Sometimes he'd speak seven or eight times uh, after a given talk. Per hour. <laughs> uh, in 1985, the SRS meeting was here, and uh, Contrella and Dubasse brought their equipment with Harry Shuffleberg and our team, and we did the first uh, CD rod uh, here at Rady Children's with video with all the SRS guys watching on and narrated by Dennis Swanger, of course, our reporter on the scene. Um, he started the fellowship program uh, in 85, our first fellows came in 86. Uh, Reed Abrams, number two fellows, chief of ortho. You can see a couple of uh, older fellows, one of which uh, was a, a mentor for one of our fellows this year, one's going to work with one of the fellows, uh, Chris Sullivan. They started teaching conferences that you're enjoying now. Uh, he and I got into research together in hip dysplasia, pelvic harness, ultrasound, hip open reduction of the hip, San Diego pelvic osteotomy, scoliosis research, tarsal coalitions, AAO courses, AAOS courses on hip dysplasia with our old friend Stu Weinstein, which we did for 10 or 12 years for the academy. I did the clinical practice kind of stuff. He did the research education and marketing. We negotiated with the OR administrators, and uh, we had a good guy and bad guy system of letter writing or complaining. You can guess who was the bad guy. <laughs> he even went out to advertise. I found these semis and driving down the freeway that said, Wenger, even 805, Wenger, call me and come get your scoliosis surgery. It was unbelievable. In the 90s, um, Dr. Sullivan retired. And already, Dr. Wayner was pretty nationally and internationally known as a celebrity educator. They would invite him all over the place because of uh, all his different specialties on any topic and uh, his humor that went with it on, on all these uh, subjects. Uh, he was, in 1991, the guest speaker for the 25th anniversary of the SRS in Minneapolis. On, and you're going to hear more about that as the meeting goes on. Uh, we had a couple of partners, John Davis, a fellow, and Lisa Miller for a brief period of time. We joined children specialists and moved into the MOB in 1993. Miller and Davis left, and we got new characters, more stability, Hank Chambers, 92. Uh, Peter Newton, right out of high school, as you can see in this picture, <laughs> 94. And Doug Wallace, uh, the latter two were trained in Dallas, but were residents here, and Hank was one of our fellows. Here's our our group picture in 95, and if Doug was missing, we bring in a photo to cover for him. Um, I, we opened our own ER finally in 1995, which is 25 years ago. We built parking lots across the street. Here's the Wayner V formation of photography. Uh, he insisted to be in the front with the rest of us uh, on the triangle like geese flying. Uh, in the 2001, uh, the UCSD and Rady uh, merged, uh, we are up to 250 beds. We became Rady Hospital because of the donation of Ernest Rady, and uh, the docs would merge in 2009. Our group went up to six, uh, and then uh, the line left and my crew came in. We stayed at six. Uh, Dr. Wayne was a guest speaker in Ottawa on the genealogy of North Peaks, which all the fellows should read and tell us the history of how fellowships kept going and where he mentors came from a great book that followed that presentation. Our new CEO was uh, Kathleen Selleck. Um, we were now uh, 
uh, suddenly ranked in the uh, U.S. News and World, and we remained in, in the top ten between second and seventh, thanks to Dr. Wegger's leadership. Here we're all returning from a POSA meeting to see the crew that uh, went there. Um, he was then the, another time a guest speaker in 2006 of this SRS with this topic. And we remained at six, but this picture is unique because you can see a bunch of us got to the rail first and pushed Wenger to the back. <laughs> Unusual photo. And he cooperated with uh, Mercer Rang on uh, redoing his book and then subsequent uh, editions with uh, Dr. Pring, which are wonderful books on fractures and fracture care. We're now up in 07, up to 7, up to 8, up to 8. Uh, Patient volume is increasing. Here's the V again. Uh, then in 10, we're up to 10. And we, the a ACP was built in 2010. Beautiful ORs. Dr. Kearns uh, became the CEO. We moved from the fourth floor down to the third floor for our new ortho clinic in 2013. New park commenced somewhere after that over here to uh, our new offices. Our group then is 11. Uh, back to the SRS for their 50th anniversary. He's the guest speaker once again uh, on the topic. So you can see his national prominence. Uh, and in the following year, he was given the highest award for POSNA, the Distinguished Achievement Award, uh, in, in the meeting in Indianapolis with the president, Laura Carroll, and uh, some of his family members, including uh, his famous sister works for the Mayo on, on your left, uh, Doris. Dr. Frias became our chief in 2019. Uh, he'll be here until 2045 if it follows the tradition of the first giants of uh, CEO land. Dr. Mayer has 175 papers, 33 chapters, thousands of presentations, including one, Will Your Child Live to Be 100? So I think uh, we should all listen to or look at that one. He's been uh, in 20 different countries. Uh, team is now 12 with Emily's edition. With retirement from clinical care, he can spend more time in doing what he likes to do, teaching uh, with his wife, Kathy, with their four kids and grandkids, and with his old fellow mates, uh, Vern Tolo, and his old partner here, Tony Herring. His uh, fellows at meetings, it's listed and he can go riding with Peter Newton. Uh, probably his greatest moment at Pete's Ortho was the Dallas meeting uh, headed up by Tony Harry in 1991. For entertainment, uh, one evening they took us out in the countryside, and these people were playing, the Dixie Chicks. They were uh, just an upstart band there, and their only uh, song was Thank Heavens for Dale Evans. But they invited us up on the stage uh, sort of with, with the break time to play along with them. And here's two famous singer, singers from San Diego. <laughs> Unbeknownst to me, uh, he was a former choir boy and was much better than I was, even though I was better dressed than he was. <laughs> so I was eliminated and he was asked to continue with the checks, which happened for us, he declined and came back to San Diego. Uh, brilliant mind, brilliant surgeon, innovator, orator, humorist, and provocateur. Uh, is your main streams of your talents, Dennis. So, um, thanks for 40 years of friendship and partnership from Sandy and myself to you and Kathy. Thank you. Thanks, uh, Next, we have uh, a couple of folks coming in from Zoom. And uh, first is uh, our CEO, Patrick Frias. Patrick, can you hear us? Yes, can you hear me? We got you, go ahead. All right, good morning. Well, that was a, quite a tour through history, and Dr. Wagner, I, uh, I feel unworthy of, of being the one representing ready to say goodbye to you, given my shorter tenure here, but uh, I, I will say that I, I now have the distinct honor of, or dishonor of being the CEO who ran you off after all four that you've been, you've been with, but that, that's not a good one to have. But I do want to thank you for all the years that, that you provided and all the kids that you served. And I'll, I'll say before coming here, making my decision to uproot the family and travel across the country, one of the many uh, groups that I knew was phenomenal, one of the stellar groups of orthopedics. Uh, obviously the reputation that you had as a group is uh, well known around the world and knew it very well in Children's Atlanta. And that doesn't happen overnight. And 
And Scott did a phenomenal job of highlighting that and showing just all the work that's gone into that. It's, it's years in the making of excellent clinical care, but also research and folks uh, getting to know around the world. So thank you for that. Thanks for all the kids you serve. I want to see, I noticed I have five minutes, and I, I, I want to make sure my, my predecessor, Dr. Donald Kearns, who actually knew you a lot longer, and you saw him when he looked a lot younger in that photo than you do right now, Donald. Just kidding with you. But I'm going to toss it to Donald to say goodbye to you as well. Thanks for, for your years. Thank you, Patrick. Yeah. Wow. I'm completely blown away. Scott had stories about you even I didn't know. <clears throat> Dennis and I have a long history. We worked right down the hall from each other until one day I woke up and realized I needed to be an administrator when I grew up. Dennis is a wonderful example of the folks that we had on the ground that helped our hospital, Children's Hospital of San Diego, evolve <clears throat> from a little tiny polio hospital to a world-class academic medical center. <clears throat> Dennis was on the forefront of what we became you know, with our partners at UCSD. So I just want to thank you for being there from the beginning, understanding how important education and research was to make us what we needed to be and what we are rapidly becoming. Um, I think the fact that you, I, if I remember correctly, had one of the first uh, fellowship programs and helped all of us to develop fellowship programs across the institution. And you and Scott were on the forefront of helping us to understand how important U.S. News was for team building and for helping raise the income on the forefront of children's hospitals across the country. So I just want to, um, to let you know that this is a wonderful time to retire. There ain't nothing like a pandemic to help you understand how important the rest of life is. So I can't wait to see you on the other side here, Dennis, the water spot. Scott and Peter, thank you for inviting me. And Dennis, thank you for everything you've done for our institution over this many years. Thank you so much, Tom. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, Deborah. I see you up there and ready to go. Deborah Eastwood was supposed to be here this year as our visiting professor, and I thought it might be uh, nice to be able to hear and see her, uh, even if we have to do it virtually, and thought this might be an opportunity to, to bring her on. So, Deborah, welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, what can I say? Except, first off, greetings from our lockdown London. We're just about uh, coming out of the lockdown, uh, and it's a great honour to be here virtually, although I would have much preferred to have been there in person, and I feel somewhat cheated by that little virus that I didn't manage to make it over to see you earlier on in the year. My first recollection of you, Dennis, uh, is by sort of second uh, box removed ring. I had the privilege of spending a few weeks with Mercer Rang, at a stage where he was just putting the final touches with you to that book which has guided me throughout my whole career, The Art and Practice of Children's Orthopaedics. And he told me then what a privilege it was to work with someone and have such a friendly working relationship and be such a colleague uh, who had such similar views on how to address the problems of paediatric orthopaedics. And he told me then that if I ever had the privilege of having such a good friend and colleague, then I would be truly blessed. And so I remembered that, and then about a year later, I arrived with my ABC Travelling Fellows uh, to San Diego. I have to say, we, were, we arrived in a somewhat shell-shocked manner because we'd started our uh, trip in Baltimore, and we'd been grilled and frightened to death, really, and then we shipped across the States to San Diego, where the sun was shining, the wine was there, the food was there, the chat was there, and everything suddenly became much more relaxed. And you were a shining light during that time, Dennis. Uh, just a different way of uh, explaining things, a philosophy of paediatric orthopedic practice. At, at the children's hospital, there was a sort of a discussion and education to everything that happened, and learning was fun, uh, and it was a friendly environment. Since then, of course, our paths have crossed all around the world. Wherever we meet, whenever we meet, 
I always know you to be the person who is always questioning, although always knowledgeable, of course, but always trying to find the finer points in everything that we see and do. You're always interested, be that in uh, the medicine and the pediatric orthopedics, of course, and in the kids we treat, but also in the people you meet. And wherever we met, you always had a word to say, you always remembered what we talked about before, and that friendship sort of crossed the globe with us whenever we met. And it's a friendship that I value enormously. And always little nuggets of wisdom that I could then take back to work with in my department, sorry, our department, and to work with the kids. So, what else can I say? You were always knowledgeable, as I say, about life, the universe, as well as pediatric orthopedics and always, always such good company. So it's been a privilege to, be, to meet with you, to be with you, and to learn your clinical nuggets that I hope my patients have benefited from. Thanks, Dennis. Thank you, Deborah. That was wonderful. I appreciate it. Thank you, Deborah. Great. Uh, next up, we have uh, Beirut Zakmaria, uh, who's going to say a few words. Beirut, are you ready? Thank you. Uh, Peter um, and Scott too, for giving me um, this opportunity um, and honor to say a few words today. Um, when I heard about uh, Dennis's retirement, we had talked about this many times, and I was uh, really uh, couldn't imagine that uh, Dennis is uh, uh, is retiring. But uh, as announcement said, uh, this is a clinical practice, and just giving my own uh, experience, uh, I'm confident that he, uh, this is not the first time we'll see or hear from him, and uh, really I can't imagine a Monday conference without Dennis, um, and it will not be the same. Um, so uh, thank you again for this opportunity. Um, uh, I want to say that uh, Scott and Dennis were uh, the reason I came here to San Diego 30 years ago. Um, but my uh, admiration to, for him is not just personal, uh, but it is uh, for how what he has done and contributed to the field of pediatric orthopedics, and for uh, his commitment pure commitment to academics, science, mentoring, and he had always showed, has shown that this is, you know, he put that first uh, in front of any personal benefits. Um, Dennis's uh, reputation of a frank and open and honest analysis of all issues known for everyone, uh, whether it's scientific, historical, cultural, even political, has made him truly one of the most effective and sought after educators of our time. Because of those reasons, um, in, uh, in 1992, as was mentioned by Scott, um, he was, uh, for those who were not there, uh, he delivered a uh, segment there that just shows his uh, courage and uh, dealing with things that other people wouldn't uh, talk about. Uh, and uh, this is a short clip of what he said in 25th anniversary of the Scoliosis Research Society. This is the SFNN News from New York. Thursday, 26 September, and I'm Nira Wenger, your host for the SFNN Report, broadcasting weekly from our New York studios. Welcome to our show. We began our program in the late 1970s as SNN, or Spine News Network, to provide both national and international news to spine surgeons. However, in the Reagan era, our traditional scientific listeners had changed their values and interests, and we began to lose our audience. I'm happy to announce that our corporate board and commercial sponsors have recognized the changing needs of our listeners, and for the first time tonight, we are broadcasting under our new title as the Spine Financial News Network. Our new logo better reflects the interests of our listeners. 
And uh, there is no question because of all these qualities, uh, I uh, uh, had asked him to uh, be the presidential guest speaker in, in 19, 2006. And I was uh, very honored that he uh, uh, accepted that invitation. And uh, this is uh, again another uh, great and uh, excellent uh, presentation at that meeting. And this is the year that we spent together on the board of uh, uh, Scoliosis Research Society. Uh, I think his uh, uh, legacy really is the mentorship. And that comes from a series as shown by Scott Mubarak, uh, the mentors that really put them in the, in the right course. And he has continued uh, to do this on his own uh, training and uh, mentoring um, hundreds of uh, um, trainees over the years. And I think uh, it's, it's, it's not for him to um, uh, be the, um, to gain respect and, and greatness by any titles, but really reaching to the hearts of individuals and leaving a permanent impression on them and, and, and so they can carry it to, to, to the others. That's the great talent and gift, one that lasts forever. You know, there are people who may be great and maybe uh, uh, Dennis would not even know, but the generations that go on and eventually the patients will benefit from what he has uh, uh, trained uh, their physicians and doctors would benefit uh, very greatly uh, uh, with this, and even they, they may not know even the name of Wenger. So um, uh, I, I, I think uh, I, I wish um, Dennis uh, a very happy retirement, um, a clinical practice, uh, enjoy teaching, and hopefully will be with less stress and, and much more time to spend with Kathy and, and your family. Congratulations, Dennis. Thank you, Bruce. It's wonderful. Thank you, Bruce. Okay, next us we have uh, one of your former fellows representing a long group of people who have, uh, who you've trained through the years, and we, we very much appreciate you beginning the fellowship program. And Dr. Stephen Frick is uh, going to join us for a few words. Steve. Thanks, Peter. Can you hear me okay? Wonderful. So, uh, Dennis, it's, uh, it's an honor to um, speak on behalf of all of your former fellows and your colleagues and friends around the world in pediatric orthopedics. Um, one of the things I would say is you may not have looked at the list, but we're all becoming Zoom experts. Uh, and there, right now, I see 106 people on this Zoom call. And uh, what I would say is, Fellows, and one of the things that we appreciate is that you have shared with us all of your friends and uh, your connections, your uh, appreciation for history, and the contributions of all of those friends and their friends before them. And uh, it really is a, it's a priceless gift as a fellow because we get connected to the PDF orthopedic world through you because you are so connected to the pediatric orthopedic world. And I think that the participation just in this Zoom call sort of exemplifies uh, that. Um, I was trying to think of you know, what to say on behalf of all your fellows. I'm here in St at Stanford now with uh, Megan Emery and Kevin Shea, two of your former fellows. But they're really spread around the United States, Canada, the world. And uh, it, you, you're just a remarkable educator. I know it's, it's really been your passion. Um, and no one that I know is better at running an educational conference than Dennis Winger. And it doesn't matter if it's Monday morning in San Diego, if you're moderating from the podium at Pozna. Um, you, the idea that I believe you said you learned from uh, Ben Eisman about creating dynamic tension in the room uh, everyone in the room, no matter their status, is on the edge of their seat because they know that they may be called on next 
to answer one of your uh, curious questions. And uh, it really is a, a real gift, and, and you share it with all of us. Um, and I think that uh, we all try to mimic that when we go forth and teach our conferences or moderate sessions, but no one's better at doing it than you are, Dennis. Um, one of the things that I, I wanted to talk about from the standpoint of your real contributions in starting our, our professional society, the Pediatric Orthopedic Society of North America, is that you know, you've been involved since the beginning and you helped help create this culture that I think is, uh, is really what makes our society special. And it's, it's the ability to question our colleagues for the betterment of everyone's knowledge and really for the betterment of taking care of our patients. And uh, I'll just tell you a couple of little stories that anyone who's been to a, a pediatric or pediatric society meeting appreciates is that Dennis, I don't believe, has ever met a microphone that he did not like. <laughs> and uh, no one has been to the microphone more at the pediatric or pediatric society meeting than Dennis. Um, and as uh, Dr. Eastwood said, you know, always an intelligent question, and always well thought out, but stimulates us all to think and question what we know. Uh, one of the things that Dennis uh, taught me was that you know you don't you don't typically learn things from people that you agree with, um, and I think Dennis, no one's better at disagreeing with people in a, in, than you are, and uh, in, and again in an intellectually curious way that makes the person you are questioning and, and the audience think about the problem in a way that usually we haven't sort of framed in our mind to think about it. So it's been a real contribution. And the two stories I'll share about that are that my very first year reviewing abstracts for the Pediatric or Big Study, I came across this abstract titled, The Great Question. Like, is it possible to go to the microphone and ask the great question about the study that points out either its critical flaw or its great contribution? And supposedly someone tallied up all of the queries from the microphone at the pediatric or pediatric site annual meeting for a three year period, and they put them in categories. And one of them was like an actual question about the paper presented, and that was like 20%. <laughs> and then the next one was a mini paper on the same topic that was rejected by the program committee <laughs> that the questioner sought the microphone to present their paper that was rejected. That was another 20%. It went down this line, but the very last column was you. Dennis Wenger. <laughs> so they got their own column and they said that you yourself had been to the microphone 20% of all of them. That wasn't an actual study and they were just uh, you know, kidding with us, but uh, you were recognized for your willingness to participate and to listen intently and to be curious and to ask questions. And anyone who's your fellow has learned how to do that. And it, 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 is, it is really, um, uh, and etern we are eternally grateful for that, for you stimulating us to think and to be curious and to ask questions. Um, and I think that uh, the other the other closing story about that is that you went to the microphone one time and you asked Ken Noonan a, a question, and Ken had not been a member of Close Enough for very long, and he his response to you was, and I don't even remember what the question was, was about, but he said. Dr. Newton, uh, Dr. Wenger, I haven't been a member of Pozen long enough to know whether or not I like your questions or not. <laughs> so, uh, what I can say is that the fellows, we all learned to like your questions. And we, we actually appreciated the dynamic tension. And knowing that, as you said in your Distinguished Achievement Award speech, that on Sunday nights, we should be reading and studying and not watching Sports Center Because we knew we had to get ready for Monday when you were going to put that dynamic tension in the room and you were going to ask us uh, curious questions. Um, so a couple other things that you talked to your fellows that I think are important. You, you know, you've said that you learned in Iowa when and if a patient needed surgery and that you learned in Toronto how to do it quickly and efficiently. And, you know, we took those concepts to heart when we did our fellowship in San Diego. And we really did, you helped us put it all together. Who needs a surgery, who will get better from the surgery, and then how do you execute that surgery efficiently and in a technically excellent manner. Um, so, you know, from your fellows, from your POSNA colleagues, um, I'll just wrap up by saying that, you know, 
we're eternally grateful. Um, you, you, your contributions are immense. Um, as Deb said, my favorite book of all time is The Art and Practice of Children's Orthopedics, because it demonstrates your appreciation of history, um, your use of quotes and knowledge of the world's literature to pass along educational concepts. Um, and you, you really just been a remarkable educator. And uh, with that, I think you have gained immortality. Because what's going to happen, it happens every day in, in all of our clinics, in all of our ORs, your words come out of our mouths. And we're going to repeat the things that you taught us. And the people we teach are going to repeat those things to the people that they teach. And that is one of the beauties of being a teacher, is that you gain a little immortality. So to Kathy, who I saw, your, your life partner, congratulations. We hope you enjoy your retirement. We are definitely going to miss you. But we look forward to seeing you at conferences. We know you're going to go to the microphone and pose it again. You can't. You, it's a. It's like an irre, It's an irresistible magnet drawing you. You can't. You can't not go. Help us learn and help us be better. So from all of us, your fellow fellows, um, your posing colleagues, uh, our patients are better. Uh, we are better, and our profession is better because of you. So thank you very much. Thank you, Steve. I really appreciate it. Thanks, Steve. Okay, Dennis, we have one last uh, uh, Zoom speaker for you. This is one of your friends from afar. Uh, Andre Kalin, joining us from Geneva, is uh, coming up. Hi, Dennis. It's, it's a great, great pleasure to be part of the... Uh, uh, do you hear me? Yes, you're coming through fine. You're coming through fine, Andre. Okay. You had some slides. Okay. I just want to clarify. Do you want me to play those slides as you're speaking no, earlier? I will, I, will, I will tell you. It will be a little later on. Perfect. I will begin to, to say some, some words. Because it's such an honor to be part of this uh, uh, celebration. Because retirement, uh, I know a little bit about that, is not uh, uh, the end of uh, the work. It's the beginning of a uh, new life and a uh, new uh, Okay. 
We'll get we'll get them right up, Andre. There you go. Okay. Okay. So, uh, if we see your face uh, many times, it's uh, because somebody took the no. Well, come back, please. <laughs> because somebody takes the picture and uh, you you take the uh, microphone in meeting, but I think you take your. Uh, somebody which uh, recall all the good moments you we have together that, that you and now uh, you are at the retirement period and uh, as you know Utah next slide please is uh, next it's a uh, dinosaur area and uh, I, I found those uh, uh, pieces of dinosaur and the spine, and uh, uh, I think that you will have a new interest in uh, uh, pelvis and spine around midway, and uh, with this vertebra, it would be far easier to put uh, uh, a transpedicular screw uh, without any damage. Next. That's uh, uh, some of the subjects we, we discussed very much. Uh, we have uh, uh, some very deep and important discussion about religion, and uh, it's why I, I put the Pope Francisco here. But we have also a lot of discussion about uh, U.S. politics and the other countries, and I know that uh, you are a fan of India, you travel many times in India, it's why I, I put this uh, uh, picture. I don't know if you remember, but in uh, 99, I was in San Diego, and suddenly you told me, because uh, it was uh, 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 some case at the OR was cancelled, so you said, we will do something special. And you took me to a tour pond, and it was a big uh, uh, golf tournament, and we followed, at that time, young Tiger Woods, for some old, it was a fantastic time. And on the uh, map of the world, you see the distorted map of the world, because you always look at uh, uh, the world in a different way. And that uh, uh, map has the country in relationship with the population, uh, number of population of each country, and, and that counts so much. Next. You have good connection with Switzerland, because you are from Swiss origin, and uh, at, at the corner down here, it was in a meeting, I think, about 20 years ago in Stuttgart, and it was uh, Uli Esner and yourself, we were a table from Swiss origin. And now, in uh, Midway, where you have your home, you perhaps, on purpose, choose a city very deeply linked to Switzerland. And uh, when I visited you in a uh, in, uh, big way, we had uh, the pleasure to see the uh, Swiss flag uh, in the wind. And uh, um, in Switzerland, the name of Wenger is known by the Swiss Army Knight. For us, it's uh, the Wenger Swiss Army Knight. And uh, uh, there is a classical Swiss Army Knight uh, which has one blade and uh, uh, one scissor and so on and so forth. But you, you are the super Swiss Army Knight on the right uh, top end with about 60 different tools. And uh, when we look at your uh, career in uh, uh, pediatric orthopedics, you are the super Wager Army Knight. Next. So we share moments of friendship, a lot of discussion. With the retirement, you will enjoy more the nature and Utah midway, but also visiting countries and art. You always were very uh, involved in the uh, uh, museum and art. And uh, I hope that in the future, you, we will share many uh, moments of, uh, of friendship around the world. Last one, please. And uh, I think every uh, good uh, surgeon and teacher and uh, uh, at the end of the career 
there on somebody which is uh, at home looking after him. And here I would like to uh, uh, thank Kathy uh, um, for everything she did for you, but for us and for Carol, she joined me to say the best period of your life now that you are going slowly to retire. See you soon, Denis. Thank you, Andre. That was wonderful. Thank you, Andre. That's beautiful. Uh, Dennis, next, uh, we, there are so many people who want to actually be here and say something on this that uh, it's just physically not possible. But there were a few people who wanted to uh, send their regards in the form of a Hungarian impersonation. And so I just thought we would play a few of those. Uh, and here's the first one.
uh, performance that is worthy of an Oscar. I personally cannot thank you enough for all the ways you have helped me over the years. It begins with you just being willing to offer a fellowship to a small town kid from a small residency program in Texas. And this led to one of the greatest years of my life and undoubtedly changed my life forever. This is a doctor. This is an average. This is Michael Jordan. This is your child. I saw him in my cafe at our house to go somewhere. And he pulled up the ticket card. Kathy was getting in the back seat, and I had one foot into the back seat, but all of a sudden he took off. <laughs> and he was halfway down the next block when the door slammed and he, they realized that I was not in the car. <laughs> and this whole life, your legacy lives on, though, too. It's from the smallest things to in the operating room. And so you can be sure that as I walk across the IU's campus, that I'm never so inefficient to walk along the, the winding paths. I always go to the shortest distance from A to B, so there's a cattle trail through the, the grass for me. I just wanted you to know the influence that you've had in my training, not just during my time in fellowship, um, but from the tree that you've created, uh, uh, the branch that you've created in the tree of orthopedics. I learned under Dr. Adamchek, Dr. Ritzman, Dr. Goodwin in my residency, uh, and then have joined Dr. Abel in practice here in Virginia. And so. My children's orthopedics life is full of um, branches from the San Diego tree, and I thank you very much for that. All right, guys, you can, you can see and hear from all of these folks how much they love you. Uh, they love you for your orthopedic surgical knowledge, your critical thinking, your demanding style, and your sincere mentorship. Highlights from these video messages uh, are probably the, the most commonly quoted was uh, the bell curve of coordination and your contributions in the Rang textbook as, uh, as the funny ones. But several suggested that your voice will be in their heads and are in, their, in the words that they speak to their own patients, uh, as Steve mentioned uh, earlier. I'm, I'm sorry we don't have time for everybody to see all these messages, but we will uh, make this available for everybody. They really are a spectacular set of genuine uh, uh, thanks to you and recognition of what you meant to them and uh, to our profession. Yes, we also love your stage presence, your eloquent oration, your critical debating, and as mentioned previously, your tenacity for the mic. Uh, I was going to tell a story that Steve told earlier, but I've got another posing story that I like as well. And uh, you came, I, I can't remember if you were moderating or came from the floor on this one, but somebody was giving a talk about interleukin 7, up regulation, IL-7 this, IL-7 that. And I think your question was something like, I know where IL-7 is, but is that where I find the toothpaste? <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. Well, uh, I also know how much you enjoy uh, tweaking us a little bit in conference, making everybody really say, uh, are you serious? But uh, that poking the bear, uh, creating that doubt and discomfort that leads to our real debate and questioning dogma is something that I think uh, you've also heard so many of your folks uh, and trainees and friends uh, thank you for. We've had uh, Moments with you as, uh, as a friend or, or as a mentee, that you've always been there to help us. Uh, I certainly uh, don't think that uh, I would be here if I hadn't come across your influence early in my training career. Uh, sometime early in residency, uh, Dr. Winger took me under his wing, gave me the knife, let me make some mistakes, but also uh, uh, made me a better surgeon, thinker, uh, and doctor. We're all blessed to have been your friend and your colleague and or a mentee. I was lucky enough to be all three. Congrats, Dennis, on your career in surgery that has touched so many. Uh, we know you have many years to come in our conferences. I have uh, no doubt that uh, that tenacity for the mic will remain. We love you, we thank you. We wish you and Kathy the very best. 
And uh, now that it's been almost an hour without you saying much more than thank you, uh, I think it's time to let you have the mic back. And uh, we welcome you to uh, make a few words if you like to us. Do you, want me, do you want me to come? Thank you very much. Do you want me to come to the podium? I think you should come up here because that way you'll be on the screen that people can see you. And uh, as you're coming up, we'll give you a virtual standing applause by uh, here in the room and everybody outside. Thank you, everyone. That was a remarkable gathering of information. <clears throat> and it's not quite an Academy Award, but <clears throat> I do understand the difficulties with having responses be too, too long. Really, really nice to hear all of this at this time. And Kathy mentioned it the other day. You know, they sometimes people tell these things when you're sort of at some sort of memorial service, but it's sometimes the, the hearing isn't that good once you're at that segment. And so I really appreciate hearing it now. <clears throat> I don't want to thank everyone because we don't have time, but I do want to thank uh, Peter and Scott and J.D. Bomar for putting this together. It was obviously a, a lot of work, and probably others were involved as well. Uh, unsung heroes I've got to mention, because I had many, many famous professors and mentors, but the people who really matter for me to get things done are finding and working with people that think a little bit like you and like you. And so I'd have to mention Karen Noble, who was with us for 20 years running the program, known around the world as Mrs. Children, Mrs. Children's Orthopedics of San Diego. Uh, Holly Leffler, who followed her in that role. Sunny Park, who you heard on the little script, who could easily be the chief of my service. She knows everything. She's from a family of surgeons, and she could easily be the surgeon. And, of course, J.D. Bomar, who was here at the camera, who was always there. He's a genius in audiovisual and, and illustrations for all the books and articles I've written. I said, without him, I would have no color, no photos, and all of my works would read like a government document. Thank you, J.D. And of course, my wife, Kathy, who's been mentioned several times, I recommend generally a long marriage to the same person. It seems to work out well. <laughs> and you, it's said that you're supposed to teach your children how to argue rather than just sort of skate. And so that's something I would advise. Um, <clears throat> my career mentors, I do want to mention this article that will appear in our annual report newsletter. They asked me to write a paper called Reflections on an Academic Career. And you can hear in there the people I think who have influenced me the most, beginning with my parents. Um, <clears throat> I do want to mention Ben Eisman, because Steve Frick mentioned him. And Ben Eisman is a professor of surgery at the University of Colorado, a good friend of Starzl, a good friend of Robert McNamara, where he developed the idea of dynamic tension. And Eisman just passed away about four years ago at about age 95. We had a wonderful memorial for him. And I didn't realize it, but our Denver General 3 p.m. Friday surgical conferences where people came from multiple states, Ben Eisman locked the door at 3 p.m. They asked him if he wanted a bigger room. He said no. The door was locked at 3 p.m. so people would be there on time. And that was how you begin to create dynamic tension. The rest of it is sort of intellectual. Um, <clears throat> I do want to mention institutions. I worked for seven years at Scottish Rite Hospital in Texas. Uh, it was a wonderful place, very well funded, an incredible place to begin a career in children's orthopedics. When I came to California, everyone said, aren't those Texans terrible? The Bushes and the Cheneys and the governors who don't seem to follow all the rules. I said, no, Texas is wonderful. They have an institution with the funding and the resources that the Scottish Rite Hospital has, and the belief that a, a capitalist system can create that, perhaps as well as the government can, was a really wonderful learning experience for me. The hospital in San Diego, I've sort of seen not quite as long as Scott McGarrick has, but its growth toward a high-level scientific institution, big interest in genetics, so it's been a great place. And if you're going to be involved in academics, you do want to find a place to um, work in an institution that can help you. I close my uh, uh, article in that um, session with some thoughts for the next generation. And some of them have been given already, and I'll just say these very briefly. First, I will again say, get and stay married. So Tony Herring, Stuart Weinstein, Bern Tolo, myself, more than 200 years of marriage combined for the four of us to the same person. And this stability of your family life, I think is very important if you're in a very, very trying profession. We live in a modern era where it's difficult to maintain 
a marriage, and we tend to be opinionated, sort of probably annoying people in some ways, and so I think nurturing that is really very important. I said enjoy your profession. With the right approach, it will not seem like work, and I really, really believe that. I put it in that my parents in our farm taught us that it was really interesting and really satisfying to get done and then take a look at it and say, hey, I did that. Life as a surgeon can be boring or interesting, and you get to choose the course. You set it up with where you take your practice, what type of work you do, what you're interested in. And a good start in doing that is to focus on others rather than yourself. Think about them, how you can help them. The third is right from Ben Eisman on, read everything, knowledge is power. Power can be abused, but there's a lot to read, a lot to know, and if you're going to be in a subspecialty, that is important. I say learn from every mentor. The good ones and the bad ones. And so from my orthopedic teachers, about two-thirds of them, I learned wonderful things, and I wanted to do that. The other third, I thought, were negative factors and were problematic, and you then spend the rest of your life avoiding that. So look carefully at them all. Take the time to guide trainees, whether they're a medical student, a resident, or a fellow. Try to work with them on projects that you are interested in. If you assign them a, pro you assign them a project and you're not really interested, they'll know quickly. And I have to mention one person who was a UCSD resident, or excuse me, medical student that I mentored 20 years ago, and he's now on the final listing to be the chair of UCSD Orthopedics. As we get a sense that it's worthwhile helping them get started. Join an orthopedic team. It's hard to be John Wayne anymore. You have to be part of a system, part of a team, and a good team member. Unfortunately, we have a really good orthopedic group. Enjoy each patient. We call it reading the t-shirt model. I got it from a small editorial in the New England Journal 20 years ago. When you walk in and talk with a kid, he's not very interested in like birthday's disease. And anything you tell he and his mother about it will bore them. Reading their t-shirt means, what does it say on their t-shirt? Is it Minecraft? Is it a skateboard? Whatever, you can learn a lot. And the kid will then know you're somewhat interested in them. And although you may be interested in birthday's disease, you can be sure they're not. Working on family career balance. Little concern about this as the four eighty hour work week, etc., work into position because there are times and places where your family has to be second. It's the job of the septic hip in the middle of the night and the worried parents. They want to be sure you're really interested in them. They don't know whether you have any kids or not, and at that moment they don't particularly care. And in some cases they might wish you didn't, because they want you to have the dedication of a nun or a priest toward their child problem. And finally, um, avoiding excessive competition. Tim Ward once told me this, and I really liked it. He said, there will always be those who are greater than you. So you're not going to be the greatest, the most famous, and the most wonderful ever, and coveting after it will just give you troubles. Um, but you should be willing, <clears throat> despite knowing that others are greater, you should be willing to have interesting conferences, have deep discussions. People would sometimes think that Scott and Greg and I hate each other at the end of an orthopedic conference. But I say I learned it from lawyers. I once had these, this group of lawyers coming down here to take a deposition in our library, in our office. And they were absolutely vicious. I was worried that we were going to have some sort of knife fight. And then toward the end, they started looking at their watches. They said, hey, we've got to get this thing over. I said, oh, you're driving back? He said, oh, no, we have a booking to play golf at Torrey Pines. And the guys from both sides, the plaintiffs and the defense, are going to play golf at Torrey Pines after. And so your conferences should be dynamic, interesting, energetic, critical of your partners. And when you walk out the door, you go play golf. So that's about all for today. Thank you very much for everything. I really appreciate it. Great. Thank you. Kathy, I'm looking at you up there. Do you want to let me say anything? We just want to tell you how much uh, we uh, appreciate you for uh, uh, bringing him over and getting us getting uh, to us every morning. I'm sorry you get uh, so much of them now. Uh, it's, uh, it's almost over here, but uh, you can send them out on every Monday and Friday morning for uh, a break for yourself, and uh, we'll get to enjoy them in conference on, on those mornings. So. Uh. Well, all I can tell you, and you'll all understand, is that it's been an adventure. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's great. Adventures, it has its low moments and its incredibly high moments. So I thank you for doing such a nice thing for Dennis today. It's been wonderful for myself and 
our children who are all tuned in and some friends. And so I think it's a very nice summary. And as Dennis referred to, I'm really glad we're doing it while he's up on the stage as well. <laughs> <laughs> right on. Okay, well I know there's uh, a lot of other folks out there that would uh, love to have a word. We're, we're unfortunately not really set up for that. I'm sorry. But uh, send your messages in the chat and we'll take those for them. And if you still want to send in a video, we'll tag it on to uh, JD's production. And Dennis, uh, we don't really have a gift for you other than those memories. For a guy who's got everything, we're going to put all those messages together for you and uh, send you off with uh, hopefully an entertaining evening and some uh, fun memories uh, to remember the, your career by. Congratulations once again.